Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Good morning, everyone. Kevin Cruz here. And today I've got something super cool for you. How would you like to go online and talk to IBM Watson like right now? Like ask IBM Watson a question or ask for some advice related to management or leadership. We call her Coach Amanda. She is the world's first executive coach built with IBM Watson artificial intelligence. And I need your help. See, she currently knows about a couple hundred different management issues and leadership topics. She's got about a hundred employee problems, about 200 different things she can give you advice and tips on, but she has to get a lot smarter. The only way Coach Amanda will get smarter is if she talks to you and like a thousand of your friends, because that's the way AI works. We can anticipate the questions that you're going to ask, the things you might ask about. And we tried, we put that in, and then we brought Coach Amanda to 10 people, then 100 people, and then 200 people, and then 500 people. And every round, the questions that she doesn't know, we then teach her about, and she gets it right the next time. But we now need to go to the world. We need to get thousands of questions so she becomes the smartest AI coach on the planet. So if you want to be one of the first people in the world to talk to a robot executive coach, go to leadx.org forward slash Amanda. So that's L-E-A-D-X dot O-R-G forward slash A-M-A-N-D-A, Amanda. And you'll be able to just type any kind of question or comment in there. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you got an employee uh, who smells and you got to figure out how to tell him that he smells. Or maybe you got a problem with an employee who's always coming in late. Or maybe you want to get advice on how to increase employee engagement or you just want to know where she's from and what her favorite food is. Whatever it is you want to ask, go ahead and ask. And let me know what you think of it. You could just send an email to kevin at leadx.org. Uh, you don't have to tell us what questions that she missed or got because we're going to get a report at the end of it that tells us what she missed. But hey, I'd love to know if you think, wow, she's really creepy or she's really dumb or she's really cool or I can't believe she's this smart already. So go to leadx.org forward slash Amanda, play around and shoot me an email, kevin at leadx.org. Let me know what you think. And on November 8th, 2018, I am hosting a one day event. It's Lead X Live. The theme is scaling leadership. And we're bringing in about a dozen case studies and panels exploring how can you scale leadership in your organization? These are going to be directors and VPs of HR and management training and development sharing their best cases and best lessons learned as they roll out new manager training programs, development programs for senior executives, how they are measuring success and more, visit leadx.org and click on the events tab at the top to get more information. You can save half off, 50% off, if you sign up before October 15th. That's like not many days from now. So jump on the website, check out LeadX Live 2018, and use the registration code SAVE50 to get 50% off. And before we go to reader email, I hope you heard Monday's podcast where I interviewed Matt Rosetta. He's the founder and CEO of that marketing agency, N6A. What a crazy, awesome culture he's created with embrace the pace themes. Instead of values, they have their six taglines. They have a patented employee reward system where they give out pace points and it's all this formula. A really cool guy, cool company. So go back and listen to that episode. And next week, come back because I'm interviewing Nina Baltiera, who created a leadership user's manual after being inspired by the one that I created. She's awesome. And I'm still a big believer in all of us creating our user manuals, not just the managers, by the way. And of course, we're continuing our free course of the day. 
Go to leadx.org every single day and you don't even need an email. Just click the play button, leadx.org forward slash personal to get your personal training of the day. Tell your colleagues about it. Why wouldn't you? Free resource. Hey, if you'd like to learn how to double your productivity without feeling so overworked and overwhelmed, you might like this question from KT. KT writes, I'm a student currently in my last year of schooling. It's quite tough as I'm juggling a lot of things. I'm the games captain, a prefect, taking part in the school netball team, hopefully the captain of the team. Having so many goals and duties, I'm trying to deal with all the stress and to achieve good results. If I don't, then I'll be putting my parents' money and my time to waste, which is the last thing I want. So could you please advise me how to juggle all these responsibilities and yet keep time to do self-study when I also have classes every week, KT. Okay, so this is tough love for KT and all of you out there. No, we cannot have it all. We all have the same 1,440 minutes and we must get really clear. So stress comes from when we deny the reality and think that we can or should have it all. And it comes when we haven't paused to think through the priorities and schedule them in our calendar. Think about scheduling, not listing. The things go to die on your to-do list. So my advice to KT is really reflect on, I know you wanna do all of those things and maybe you can do all of those things, but think about what is the most important. Do you value your school grades? Do you value what you get out of being the leadership experience and the fun you get out of the sports stuff, et cetera? What do you value and what does good look like to you. So do you need to study one hour every day or five hours every day? Are you gonna dedicate two hours a day to your sports or 30 minutes a day to your sports? What does good look like? And then it's like kinda putting a puzzle together, fill those time blocks into your calendar. And I would suggest do not sacrifice things like quality sleep, eating regular healthy meals, and it sounds like you're involved in sports, so the exercise is covered. But we need to focus on energy, not time. So we've got to get our body and mind in peak performance and then time block all of those things. And if you're running out of time, then yes, something has to give and you need to force yourself to think through those values. Now, if you care about increasing employee engagement in your organization, you might be interested in this question from Carrie. She wrote, I'm working on a project to pitch employee engagement to our executives, and I've had some feedback that it's gonna be a hard sell. I was wondering if you have any experience on pitching this. To me, it's obvious it makes sense, and I'm an engineer, normally not inclined towards emotional projects. I could present numbers from numerous studies, but I would like to have a more thoughtful and meaningful approach. Thanks, Carrie. Carrie, okay, here's the thing. This is actually a persuasion question. And employee engagement, don't think of it as an emotional project. Uh, you know, get that out of your head. Employee engagement, many studies show it drives hard results. The employee engagement to profit chain shows that when employees care, they work harder, their productivity goes up, quality improves, service improves. When all that happens, customers are happier, they buy more, they refer you more, sales goes up, profits go up, and ultimately your stock price goes up or investor value goes up. So this is soft stuff that gets hard results. And the reason why selling to the top can be hard is when they think this is just about making employees happy. It's about keeping everybody happy or satisfied. So you need to start and explain, look, employee engagement is all about getting emotional commitment so people give discretionary effort. This is a way to get team members to give it their all. And that impacts the bottom line. You start there. Now, in persuasion circles, everybody knows we actually decide for emotional reasons, we justify it to ourselves with logical reasons. So you do want to give the logical reasons. These are the case studies, the look up the, the famous Campbell Soup, Doug Conant employee engagement case study. Have all your research ready to go, that data. But then it's stories that move people emotionally. So you wanna talk about what the future will look like with just a 5%, 10% improvement in employee engagement. Other just quick tips, 
it's easier to sell a pilot than a program. So you're not trying to get $100,000 to roll out an engagement survey around the world. You're trying to get permission to roll out an employee engagement survey and some training and then a follow-on survey with one department, one team, one division, one business, you know, whatever that is. So that is my advice. Thanks for caring about it. Good luck, Carrie. That's it for today's show. I hope you will leave a five-star review up on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you are listening to this uh, to this cast. Those ratings go a long way to helping us to attract new listeners and to keep the show going. Also, if you're interested in more content on those reader questions, don't forget I've got a really cheap, readable, awesome book called Employee Engagement 2.0. I also have a book called 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management. And new on audio is my book, Unlimited Clients. That's the book where I explain how I spend an hour a day to connect with people, to build my personal brand, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for all of that. And remember, leadership isn't a choice. It's influence. We're leading all of the time. How are you going to lead today? <laughs>